In this video, we're going to be talking about why and how to change out your guide rods in your 1911s. There are three different types of guide rods currently used today in 1911s. You have your standard guide rods, as well as two fold configurations, both as a one-piece and a two-piece guide rod. You can see the general differences between the three by looking at them. So in this case, for example, we have a standard guide rod configuration, which is captured within the slide. And then you also have a one piece, which you see here on the Kimber, as well as a two piece, which you'll notice is just a little bit longer than the one piece. And we'll talk about what that means in a moment. Now, if you're new to, for example, field stripping in 1911, it's actually a pretty easy process. All you have to do is depress the spring plug, turn the bushing, line up the catch, and release. And that is how you do a general disassembly of a 1911. And then within the pieces you'll see here, you have the plug, you have the spring, as well as the standard length guide rod. And of course, to reassemble, all you have to do is line up the hole. depress this plug, turn the bushing, and then you're good to go. Now, if you have a one-piece guide rod, like you see here on the Kimber, you'll notice you have the ability to do the same thing, but it's a little bit different because the plug is hollowed out to allow for the guide rod to go through it. So sometimes it's helpful to have a tool in order to depress this to turn the bushing to do the disassembly. Which takes us to the third issue, which is the two-piece full-length guide rod. Now, in this case, of course, we have a Springfield full-length guide rod. And one of the things you're going to notice is you can't depress the full-length guide rod here. This requires a tool in order to disassemble it to make this happen. And the reason why is this guide rod is too long. It goes the full length of the plug, which means you can't push it down to turn the bushing. Now, there's a couple reasons people give for having full length guide rods in the past. One is they indicate that it will make the gun more accurate. I've never seen this. Now, the reality is you're adding about one to two ounces of additional weight onto the front of the gun, so that might give, give it more stability, which might lead to accuracy. But as far as making the statement that this leads to increased accuracy, I've never seen. The second thing is they indicate that it will help prevent spring buying within the 1911, but the reality is I've never seen spring bind ever within a standard configuration of a 1911. So again, I don't buy that argument either. However, there is one good argument to make for the full length guide rod. And that is if you want to quickly swap out your uppers on your 1911. So say you've got maybe a 22 conversion upper, things of that nature. Then you can quickly take the uppers off and switch them out on your 1911 lower. So that is the only real advantage to having a full length guide rod. Now there are some disadvantages as well. As we indicated before, you're adding about one to two ounces of additional weight. You also can't lock forward or do a press check off of the spring plug with a full length guide rod. You can on a standard as you can see here and oftentimes people will do this as an emergency charging of the weapon as well. You give up that capability of doing that when the guide rod prevents you from being able to charge the slide. And then the final thing is, as I indicated before, one of the reasons why I don't like full-length guide rods, especially the two-piece full-length guide rods are, first thing is it, allow, it requires an Allen wrench to be able to disassemble this. The second thing is I've seen these actually come loose before. And then the third thing is, in my opinion, any gun that requires a tool to field strip is just not ready for field use. But here's the good news. If you like these Springfields or other types of 1911s that have these two-piece guide rods, you can quickly swap these out. And that's what I'm going to show you how to do today. So in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to take a two-piece guide rod on a Springfield loaded, and we're going to change it out for a standard configuration guide rod. So in this case, for example, the first thing I have to do is remove the first piece of the guide rod with, of course, the Allen wrench tool, which now allows you to be able to depress the plug and turn the bushing and release it. And then at this point, as we alluded to earlier, 
can then line up the catch and fully disassemble your 1911. Now you'll notice some of the differences here with these guide rods. The two-piece guide rod, the screws together as we showed earlier. And what we're going to do is we're going to remove this as well as remove the open-ended guide plug and then we're going to add two new parts and I've linked to these below so you know where to buy them. In this case it's a Wilson Combat bulletproof standard guide rod as well as a plug. Now one of the other recommendations is when you're buying plugs, buy some additional plugs as well. If you've ever taken apart 1911s before in the past, you'll know that sometimes these plugs have a tendency to come shooting out of the front of your gun when you disassemble them. And you, you might be in a situation where you, you need to have additional plugs. So when you order these plugs, and what I always recommend is order a few additionals as well and keep them in your bag. So in this case, all we have to do is we're taking the existing spring that we had on the one piece guide rod, and we're now going to use this to reassemble the 1911. And then once we have the new plug and spring installed, we can push down on the plug. And now we fully converted from a full length two piece guide rod to, to a standard government guide rod configuration in the 1911. Now a final note since we're talking about disassembly is talking about the spring as well. One of the questions people commonly have is how often should they change the recoil spring. I usually recommend changing the spring around every 3,000 rounds. If you've got a shorter commander model, sometimes you need to do it sooner. What you're generally looking for are, or whether or not you have feed issues or if you're ejecting cases a lot farther than you normally would, that's usually an indication that it's time to replace your recoil spring. Uh, there are also new types of recoil springs called flat wire springs that can also up to 10 times the uh, spring life that a normal uh, spring would have. But just remember when you buy those, you commonly have to buy guide rods that work with those types of springs. So just make sure that when you buy one, you buy the other. Now, the final thing I would add is if you've got an older 1911, five years or more, it's not a bad idea when you buy these additional plugs to also buy some additional recoil springs. Uh, they, over time, they can wear out. It just depends on the 1911. Sometimes people run them for decades and don't need to replace the springs, and other times they need to. The standard spring poundage for a 5-inch 1911 typically is around 16 to 18 pounds. So when you buy these springs, buy a couple extra springs along with the plugs and change them out when in doubt. And again, if you've got a 1911 five or more years old, then sometimes it's a good idea to do that. You can always, again, quickly field strip and change them out, but they're cheap, they're not, they're not expensive to buy. And then if you're shooting heavier loads, you know, plus P's or things like that, you can also increase the poundage up to, you know, 20, 22, 24 pounds on your spring. Just remember that the higher the poundage of the spring, the more stress you're putting on the frame. So it's really a balance you want to find between reliability and not putting too much stress on your handgun. So that, those are the main differences between the three different types of guide rods and of course how to change out your guide rods. And again, if you have a 1911 or you're considering buying a 1911 with a full length two piece guide rod, I highly recommend changing these out to either a one piece guide rod or a standard configuration guide rod as we did here today. If you like this video or like our channel, please subscribe on YouTube and thanks for watching.